Welcome to Painting on, Thur on Thursdays with Shauna and I would like to welcome you. If you've, this is the first time you've been here, welcome. Uh, if you will subscribe to my YouTube channel, if you're on YouTube, I'm trying to get to a, a hundred people. I got 47 so far. <laughs> um, and if you're on Facebook, like my page, you can follow me on social media. I'm on a whole bunch of them. Uh, you know, Instagram and uh, Facebook and YouTube. I think that's it. Anyway, I'm here for one hour only and I am working on watercolor right now. I paint both watercolor and acrylic. Acrylic I do birds at this point, but watercolor I do flowers. So we're going to go and work on this really pretty peony. I've got about three of the layers on. It's starting to build some form. It's still got a long way to go to get to finished. So come and join me while we work towards getting it there. Okay. So you can see that I've got more dimensionality happening, but there's still so much to do. I thought I would start with this dark one and add a layer of, of just straight pigment to it to bring it back more into that pinky purple that I, I'm wanting to, to uh, paint with. I am, um, just one second here. I'm just going to put some fresh water on and I'm using a um, dragon's tongue. I think that's what it's called from uh, Cheap Joe's. A fair amount of water but not so much water as my uh, silver, black silver ones do. So I'm going to just fill the space. That gives me time to put the paint on. And I'm going to use a different brush for the paint because I don't want it to be. I would tell you what brush I'm using on this, but they discontinued them and so you can't even get them anymore, which is completely... Uh, I haven't even started the process to see if I can find... So I'm liking the value of this. It's, it could be down a little bit more but I think that just by adding the next level of paint, we'll get there. And if not, I'll add another level layer. That's the best part about this whole thing. So if you wanna leave a comment and say hello, that would be really nice. I'm gonna get my hand down because if my hand's not down, then a hand's floating and I'm more likely to go over the edges and you have to be really careful at this point. So I'm just gonna pull that back with a little bit of this lint-free paper towel. Just move a little slower and be more deliberate. So this is this painting I'm using the following colors on. My main color is Quin Magenta. Um, and I'm using a lot of permanent rose and a little bit of rose matter. And I haven't gotten into the um, alizarin crimson. I put it on my palette just in case but it just doesn't seem to have, uh, I'm not to that point yet. And I'm using neutral tint and phthalo green and a new gamboge for the yellow, which is all this glowing area that's in here, the oranges and stuff. And uh, Quinn Red, which every time I say, start, I say this, has New Gamboge has the same, same, some of the same uh, pigment in it. Okay. Now it's a really warm day in Yellowknife here. I live in the subarctic of Canada 
and uh, our summers are brief and it's a beautiful day it's like 26 or 27 degrees celsius i'm not sure what that is in fahrenheit like that's in the 80s someplace so that's a lovely day to have and so i spent some time out this morning not as much as i will this afternoon after my live stream and you'll get you know it's, so it's a little warmer and drier in here today, so it's moving, a, I have to move a little bit quicker, I see, that I don't have the same slowness that I'm, I, you know, same time frame that I'm used to having. Okay. There, I think that's looking much prettier. Okay, so I can't work on anything right here and I've set it up so that I can't turn it. Um, normally when I'm working, I'm turning it and I'm working across ways and I'm working here and I'm working there, but it's a little hard on you guys. I don't want to make you seasick. <laughs> so let's look at, let's get the image, which is right here. Okay, let's look at, I'm working from this small image. I don't need a very big image. You can see that my paint is creeping on here and I don't really want it to creep there. So I'm going to take a clean brush. I'm going to take some water and just remove and, and then come in with my lint-free cloth and dry it so that it stops moving and leaching into that petal. Okay, so I think, I think the next place, let's, let's work up here and uh, let's get that space. I'm going to do a light coat on here because I want some of that pink to be in the lighter area. I don't want it to be as white as it is. So I'm going to put a very thin layer of pink of the uh, um, Quinn Magenta. Just a thin layer over the whole of, of this petal. It's not going to change the dark area very much, but it will change what I want on the lighter area. Again, get my hand down so that I've got more control. And I'm looking at this image and I try to keep my fingers on where I'm at because honestly it just, uh, yeah. It helps me my eyes to go back and forth and know where I'm at. Bring a little darkness down into here because I can do that. Okay. Well, if you were on Facebook, I put the announcement on that maybe I would have workers still in my working on the house, but they were able to get the soffit that blew off in the wind back onto the house. <laughs> okay, so. Now that I've done this one, it means that all the way around I can't do it. So I need to move to one that won't touch it, but still is close by. And I can see that this one here is quite intense. So I'm going to darken it up and take some of the Quinn Magenta and the uh, I'll pull this out so I can remember. Neutral tint to darken the Quinn Magenta and then take some of the, the uh, permanent rose to blend in because there seems to be a bit of a, a glow. Come and take a little bit more of that darker Quinn Magenta and pull it. 
And it takes concentration. So if I stop talking, that often means that I have to think about what I'm doing and, and be more mindful of what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Let's go over to this one here because that's it's drying pretty fast today. So I'm probably going to get... Okay, so again, the Crin Magenta mixture with the um, neutral tint, the corner here. And because it's a small area, you, you'll notice I didn't wet it. And then I'm going to come in with the um, permanent rose. And I'm going to float that next to that combination. And I'm going to come into the more pure um, uh, Quinn, to the darker part, and to the so that we have some pretty variation happening. Okay, so it seems, you know, Facebook doesn't like my news feeds. Yeah, my, my live streams. I apologize for that. I, it's, it's the challenge of being really far north is um, you don't get a lot of options for things and yeah. And I've thought about changing the time of this, but the problem is if I change it to evenings, it could be even worse because um, no, more people are at home. Okay, so I can't do these, that one, that one. I can do this one here. So let's find that one. Where is it? Where am I here? Oh, here it is. Actually, I think I'm going to do this one so that I have more context. Bring a little bit of water in here and make this value a little darker, which will push these lighter ones that are really much lighter, push it forward. Um, when we're working, mostly what you were doing is a push pull of value, and you know, you get the value correct in the background, then you end up with the value, the push-pull of the lighter and darker, um, bringing in the drama. So I'm just gonna bring down, what I love about watercolor is you can just layer and layer and it still has that glow, it still has, yeah, I guess you guys are gonna have to watch it later because honestly, I don't know. Me and Facebook, we do not like each other. And I don't know why that is. Or my live streams don't like Facebook. Okay. And always switching it up, thinking about bringing variation and not just being ubiquitously one color. So I've added some permanent rose in with the Quinn Magenta. And I'm just carefully bringing it along here. And I can see that there's some of that chronoprodone red right here. So I'm just going to put a touch of that in there. And then I'm going to come in with the, the permanent rose next to it. Oops, careful. Get your hand. I have to get that hand down. I'm Okay, there we go. And a little bit of that quinacridone up here. And I'm going to take some of that quinacridone with the um, with the neutral tint and just tint it right along here. And pull some into here and blend it down. And you can see how it's moving in there. And I will uh, just come in with a dry brush and just gently touch it and move it around so that it's, yeah, there we go. I don't want to touch it too much. I don't want to have, I don't want to pull the paint off. I just want to move it around a bit. Okay. So that gets that value a little darker, and when it dries, then I have that to compare to. Um, 
This is not quite dry enough, so let's move this direction then. Okay. Let's look at um, this one here. Yeah, this one here. Um, what am I seeing here? Okay, let's do that. Um, let me get a smaller brush. It's a smaller area. I'm just going to put a little bit of water because I see that there is this area here that I want to focus in on and I want to stay away wherever the water doesn't go the paint won't flow into because it's dry so I want this to be a highlight here and I want this to come all the way to about there and I'm looking at and I'm seeing that there's that quin red glow in around here which is really pretty. I love when flowers glow and they often do in the bright sunshine. And then we're going to pull some of the um, permanent rose in there and pull it around to here. And then we're going to get that Quin Magenta and pull it in and put it next to it. And I have to think about where I left it dry as I'm floating these colors in. I see a hint of that new gamboge right here. Interesting. Just this really subtle hint. And that's not so subtle, but I'm not so worried about it. There we go. And then we'll just pull that paint in to it. And because it's wet, it gives me a little bit of extra time to pull things and move things around. Look at that shape and think about where I'm at here for, for creating that highlight. So if you get my newsletter, you saw pictures of a snipe this week. I heard the snipe and I was right there watching it, looking for it, and I couldn't see it for anything. Okay, so I think I can go to this one, which is quite intense. So I need a bigger brush to put some water on. I don't need it huge, but I do need a, a brush that will have more ability to put water on. Okay. Oh, no, it's this one that I want. This one here. I'll put a little bit of water there. I don't want that. So I'm going to soak that up. Okay, so I'm going to come and I'm going to wet this area. It's amazing how in tall grass a small bird can, our medium-sized bird, I guess, can hide away and be impossible to find. But I, the picture I didn't put up was the snipe that when I sort of lifted my head as I came across, uh, I came close to the bridge at Niven that's on the far side. Um, there it was, plunked right there on the bridge. And so I got some amazing photos. I thought, hmm, paint-worthy ones. I hadn't thought about them going and uh, lighting on top of a tree, as I've only ever seen them on the ground. And I've, yeah, they, I, I've, they winnow when they are flying over, which I find quite fun. And I saw locally, we don't have a lot of roses because we're subarctic and roses don't tend to do very well here. And they certainly don't survive the winter. Um, and I saw play, business has beautiful roses. So I am going out today to photograph them this evening because my goodness, that's a, that's a treat. And with not being able to travel, my, uh, 
ability to take flower pictures is um, is huh, remarkably uh, brought down quite a bit. Okay, that's a lot of paint. I don't want that much paint. But because this area is wet, I can come in, clean my brush, dry it off, and then blend it together. I've been out a, a few times around midnight this week because it has been just beautiful and uh, and I'm not the only one out at midnight there's other than the bugs the bugs are really out <laughs> yes and if you got my newsletter um, if you go to my website dancingravenstudio.ca and the link will be below after I finish this live stream um, you can sign up for my newsletter and and it's the only place I, I put pictures that I take, uh, take. I don't put them out on social media, but if you sign up for my newsletter, you can see bird pictures of, you know, my experiences and uh, flower pictures because I've got a peony that's going to burst forth here pretty soon. And I know lots of people are like, oh, well, peonies. But here in Yellowknife, that's a big thing and that they survived and are going to make flowers after about three years of being there. I'm happy. Oops, sorry guys. I have to get up and turn my camera back off and on. Okay, start the alarm again. Okay, so we were here. Ooh, I can see that I've got a little bit of a drying happening there and it's causing a little bit weirdness, so I'll just fix that up. Okay, so let's move to the next place. I think we could darken this one up even more. I think that would be really a good place to go. So as I get closer to getting the value correct, I, I work um, in layers and I work uh, fairly timidly in layers. I'm not in a rush. I know I can come back and put another layer on, but this paint is all very, um, yeah, it's, it's very intense and it uh, sticks on really well and it's, um, it doesn't, uh, oof, that was way too much paint. Let's change a brush to a, well, I guess it's that brush, but let's just take off some of that paint. Um, it's very staining, so it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to move. And that is good. It has its upsides. If it's staining, it's not moving when I, if I make a mistake. But it uh, has its downside as well of you can't take it back if you, uh, Change your mind. Ooh, there. Now that was way too exuberant. So let's just clean my brush off, dry it a bit, and then add more water in. And then I'm gonna take some of the Quinn Magenta and I'm gonna put it in here. Okay. And I can see that the petal, even though it's a cast shadow happening here, is a little lighter at the top edge. So I'm just going to move that paint in and then use fresh water, just a clean brush with a little bit of water. Then I can pull that paint and keep that lightness there. Okay. There we go. Hey, Stephen. Oh, Mom, I'm having some technical problems, and it's all to do with internet here and 
there's not much I can do about what the internet company does here. So, um, yeah, it's not happy and I don't know how to make it happy. <sighs> okay, so because I've got some, this is now out of commission. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to build this shape by using just a little bit of paint and capturing that. Now I put it on dry so I just dry take off the, the water most of the water and then touch the edge just to soften that edge and let that sit and dry. We can, oh it's not dry enough yet, okay we can do this one here. So I think you know, I think that's getting close to the right value. I won't know that until I put this in place. So let's work on that next. Let's get some water on there. Use my dragon's tongue. Oh, well, that's good to know it's not just me, but then, you know, I'm always having, it seems to be every week I have sagging happening, which is me, which is, um, but if Facebook is having a problem today with live streaming, and there's certainly lots of people doing that these days, I'm sure that that's a interesting technical issue. So I'm just l putting some water in. And I'm going to come all the way up here because this, all the shadow is all connected. And I don't want a ton of water. Well, um, I think, Mom, your phone is not on your Wi-Fi. And that might be the difference is that it's part of your, your, um, your bell program or whatever. Yeah, and that might be why it works better on your phone. Okay, so let's bring some darkness in here. So I'm going to take a lot of the uh, neutral tint and I'm going to float it. I can see it's quite dark in here. And I'm going to float it down and continue it on over here because I see that it's quite dark in here. There will be another, oops, let's get my hand down another layer on here where I just put the pure pigment without just to bring it back into that more that pinky purple okay so I see that that's where the dark is the darkest part of this is of course would be d down deep buried deep into the the petal and then we're going to bring that Quinacridone uh, magenta and still having some of the um, neutral tint in it, but not as much as in this deep dark area. Okay, and I see that there is some, ooh, that was a little exuberant. Clean my brush off, dry it off, come and pick up some of the mixture of the phthalo green and the permanent rose. Um, it goes much nicer together, those two, to bring the chroma down and bring the value down of the permanent rose than if I add the, um, the neutral tint. It does weird things to it. Every color, every pigment has its own its own strengths and weaknesses and you just have to learn what you want, how you want to work with them and what you can do with them. Okay, so now we're really into that lovely um, uh, quinacridone magenta with a, just a hint of and it's getting lighter as it gets away. It's darker, of course, closer to, deep down in, and then lighter as it gets away. And so I'm trying to create that feeling. 
And then when I come over here, I see that deep dark is there again. That deep dark is there. So let's float, oh, so no, it's down here that I want the deep dark. Okay. But not too much of it because it's not as, as uh, hidden away as this is compared to. So let's take that quinacridone magenta with a little hint of, of the neutral tint and blend it in. You can see this bright area. It's still quite white. I haven't done much to change that yet, um, but that's all right. I will do that when I have it dark enough so that I can compare it to what I'm working on. A little bit more hint of that quinacridone magenta with the, um, with the neutral tint. And it's a thin line of pink along the edge here. And then we're going to get some of that quinacridone with a little bit of, of it. And I can see I've lost my wet in this section. So I'm going to come back and just do, do something about that because I need a little bit of moisture to work with. It's not very big. It's not a very big area, but a little bit of moisture goes a long way in helping. Okay, that's pretty. A little bit more of the the Quin Magenta and the and the neutral tint right at the edge. Right along and then we're going to come down and we're going to go up and we're going to go up to here and then I'm going to come in with that whoo way too much water on my brush take that and a little bit of this and we're going to bring in some variations because that's what we love to do colorful flowers Okay, so I see that it's dark here, but it's kind of lighter towards. So I'm going to take my smaller brush, wet it, dry, dry it a bit, and then I'm going to pull some of that pigment between each other so that it lightens in that area. I'm going to dry my brush and lighten it a little bit more and pull this up because I don't want it to be too dark in here. There. Okay. This petal here, this part of the petal will have a lot more of the, the uh, Quin Magenta and the uh, per Permanent Rose, the pure color on it. But I need this now to dry. And I'm gonna end up with a funny little drying area here, but I'm not worried about it. If I let it dry fully, I will have less problems than if I try to come in and fix it now. So I'm just going to let it dry and then I will come back and fix it because the paint moves around quite, quite well when you need it to. Okay, so let's go back over here now because this is dried enough. It's still damp, but it's not going to pull in, um, pull in from the other, um, from the other petal if I'm careful. I have to always be careful. I might wet this area. I don't have to wet the whole thing. What I notice is it has a drop down that's pretty much the uh, neutral tint. Just a very light bit of neutral tint right at, as it drops down and bends away from, from even the light that's glowing through. And I see that there's more of, okay, where did I go? Right here. The Quin Magenta in the, in, right in here. And we're going to get the pure rose. And we don't want too much paint. We just want, I'd rather do another layer on it than do, do too much paint on it. 
it's so much easier to come in and do another layer than trying to get it to where get it there slowly versus long quickly in my old life in, before I start, took up painting um, I did um, quilts so I have a lot of patience and and I'm very happy about that okay I have a little bit of paint that's led over for whatever reason it's been dragged across so I'm just going to come in with and pick that up before it dries permanently because as I said it's pretty staining so I just took fresh water with my brush and wet it and pull, dried it pulled it back okay so I'm looking at this one again that's let's get some Okay, we're going to come in here I love how light goes through and doesn't go through petals there's such a glow in in flowers because the light can move through the petal and and do wondrous things and then you have these lovely cast shadows that just are, they bring so much depth of color to it. Hmm. Okay, I just need to see a clock. Okay. Okay, so I'm happy with that one. Um, can't do that. I can do this one now. Okay, so let's do, those are dry enough, I can put that on. Let's do this one here. The disheveled and different um, shapes of, of peonies is really quite interesting when you get close up and look at them closely. My peonies are not open yet, but today is 27 degrees, so I'm gonna go water them again when, I, when I'm done the, the live stream. And maybe, maybe by tomorrow they will open up. Maybe not. I don't know how long it takes for peonies to finally begin to open. This is my first year with them, so that's very, Yes, I'm learning. Okay, so we're now I've got that lovely permanent rose next to the Queen Magenta. And I've got a, a darker line of that permanent rose right here. And I'm going to take some of the pure um, uh, Queen Magenta and just put it next to it just to soften it out and create that interesting shape that's happening. Everything is about looking and trying to capture the shape that I'm seeing so that the petal will look like it's undulating in the wind like it actually was. I'll take a little bit of that dark to bring that in, dry it. I put a little too much so I clean my brush and dry it. And then I see I have a little bit there too, right at the tip. Very interesting as it sort of bends away a little bit. There's a little dark area there. Um, I use um, 140 pound cold press arches paper. It's, um, it's sturdy and it handles lots of layers. And I staple it onto my, like I, when it's this big, I actually turn the shower on and put the paper under and get it all wet and carefully carry it over to the kitchen to staple it onto a, a, a board that will hold it. And then um, I can cut it off and it's perfectly straight, but I can actually even just put it into, um, into a tube and, and 
send it off. So I've had paintings go to Nova Scotia, to Alberta, to Ontario, all by putting them into a tube after my, my uh, show. So hi, Joy. I'm so glad you're... The, I, I didn't look at to, to see who asked the question. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> yeah, I love the, the cold press arches. It's got such the ability to, to sort of abuse it. And, and these are the leftover pieces. So you can see how flexible this paper is. So that's why you have to staple it down because it bubbles when you, when you make it wet. Um, and so this is the leftover paper from when I cut this out and then I use them for, uh, for holding, you know, covering my hands and all of that. Okay, so we've done that, we've done that. Let's move right over here. I think you can still see me right over there. I think that that's still within the camera range. You don't see the whole painting here because um, I couldn't, I can't get my camera far enough without um, it just being too far. So I'm going to put a little bit of that beautiful quinacridone red that's sort of this orange red that's just it's so pretty and it just makes this seem like it's glowing in there. And then I'm going to come up with some of the quinacridone magenta. And again, I'm, I'm not putting too much on and it's a small area so I'm able to move fast enough to, um, to cover without worrying about it drying too fast. And so I'm using some of the uh, permanent rose here as well. So on each petal, I try to have at least two colors. Some flowers I can even do more. Um, some I see more colors in them. Um, but definitely, you know, two. And then this, these ones with the glow in the center get three different colors. And I can see this shape here. So I'm going to put a little bit more paint on my brush and I'm going to bring that shape and, and sort of darken that little area and darken right here a little bit too. Now you can see that was drying. I'm just going to come in with my damp brush and just soften that edge. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I have to, I, I used to use 300 pound paper, but you can't roll that. And um, yeah, and it takes forever to dry. Where 140 pound paper dries faster because it's thinner and which I really totally appreciate. Okay, where are we at now? So let's go over here and see if there's something we can do over here that's dry enough. I think these are all dry enough now that I can come in. And you can see that's a lot of light that is, is it's very bright, but that's just the plain paper. I'm actually going to come in later when I get the value correct and do the touch-ups on those bright areas, but I want them to stay as light as possible so that they, that's what creates the drama in the paintings. So in the corner, I see that there is, and because it's small, I'll be able to, uh, I'm just gonna get some water onto my paints here. Okay. Um, because this is small, I'm just gonna work right on the dry. I see that there's a dark area there, and then I'm gonna bring in the Quinn Magenta. Ooh, way too much water on my brush. Ooh, that moved it. I'm going to be careful not to hit that light area because I really want it to stay light, but I need more Quinn. So I just took my brush and, and cleaned it and dried it off so I could grab more paint. And then I see the permanent rose on this side of it. As it comes up here, I can see the permanent rose. 
and grab some more of that Queen Magenta with a little bit of the um, neutral tint to, to just bring that value down and bring that chroma down a bit. And I'm going to float a little bit of that neutral tint all the way along here because I dry my brush off so that it's just damp. Come and move that neutral tint to where I want it to be. What kind of board do I staple it to? Oh, I've, I've got a um, half inch plywood and I just realized I didn't actually, I just read what kind of paper, not the kind of board. Half inch plywood that I put about six coats of gesso on and sanded it in between each. And I did front, back and side, like all the whole board is covered with the gesso, which then seals it against the water and I can staple on it and paint can go on it and it's not a big issue. So uh, this is really heavy. You can't lift it up easily. The other board, I will, next, next week, I will show you another board that is much lighter. It's called Gator Board, and you can staple to it, and it's really light and easy to move around, but I don't have a piece that's big enough for a big painting, so, uh, and that's why I have it on a, have this on a, a Lazy Susan because when I work on it, it's really quite heavy to pick it up and move it. Um, it takes, you know, concentration and effort. Okay, let's come in and do this petal here. So we're really getting into this luscious, deep, dark colors. Oh, and there's a bit of a glow there. So we want to get, oops. So I want to get a little bit of, let's just, okay, turn my camera back off and on. <laughs> so I'm going to bring in that little bit of that quinacridone red. Oh yeah, which petal was I on here? Woo, way too much paint. Okay, so I can move that around and build that that value up of that really rich colors. Sorry, Joyce. I'm trying to read and paint at the same time. So it's, you know, and you're just far enough away. The computer's just far enough away and I don't have it. I didn't make it larger this week so that I could see it easier. So I'm just putting my beautiful three colors in there and I can see that it lightens up as, as the little petal is, is uh, bending. So let's just, ooh, don't have too much paint on your, too much water on your brush. So that still will need another layer over top of it. It just, yeah. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I've got that one. There's one over here that I can do and it will give um, other ones around time to dry so that I can come back and, and work on them. Um, and it's just a little, little one. So let's put, and it looks like it has a glow on the edge instead of towards the center, which is interesting. So let's take a little bit of that lovely quinacridone red, which is so vibrant, and put that in there. And then place the quinacridone um, magenta next to it. I don't want to mix them in together. I just want them to be placed next to each other so they just naturally flow towards each other. And let's get a little bit of that permanent rose because, you know, it's so pretty. 
I think that's what I love about flowers. Well, I know it's what I love about flowers and not I think it, I know. I, they're so pretty and they have so much life in them and they, and they come and they go so quickly. And, and I know some of you live where peonies are already done. They, and they haven't even hardly opened here. Um, yeah, so. And my delphiniums are getting close and they're quite a big bush of them this year. They've grown a lot. So that's a really interesting one, but I think I'm gonna bring it down a little bit because yes, the picture says it looks like it's that, but I think I need it to be a little pinker and a little less gray. So let's just take both the quinacridone uh, magenta and that permanent rose and put them next to each other and bring some color into that. So I clean off my brush, dry it off. Let's move that paint around so that it, there, I think that's good. Doesn't change, I don't wanna change the value too much, but I needed it to be a little bit more intense and more colorful. I know I'm seeing that it is as gray, but that doesn't seem to fit with what I'm doing, does it? Okay, so we have about eight minutes, six minutes, seven minutes of painting left. So let's just see how much more I can get done. Um, thinking about where wet is. Okay, here, let's come back over here. Okay, so taking that, um, It'll be nice when I get a third camera so that I can put it on my on my palette and you can see what I'm mixing because it just, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting there. Um, that's a big, a little bit bigger of a petal. So I'm going to grab a brush and I'm going to bring some water into it before I take the loaded brush that has all the paint on it. And I'm just going to touch this here. And it has that glow in there again, so, but it's not as, as bright. So I'm gonna bring that glow down a little bit by adding a little bit of just a tiny, tiny touch of the, um, the phthalo green, just, a, 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 just enough so that it's not as, as brilliant as it was. And then I'm gonna bring in Yep, and that's way too much dark in there. So I'm just gonna pull some of that quinacridone quin magenta, get my hand back up so that I'm properly, okay. Grab some of that permanent rose in here. Pull that out so it's dark towards the center wet dry my brush and ooh, still too much water on there thought I got it all off you can tell that immediately because the water repels the paint if you have too much water on and it does this really interesting thing I wonder here I'll do it here on here we'll just okay we'll just put that in place and what you'll see when I put a drop of water in there is it will push the paint away. Can you see that pushing it away? I'll leave that there and we'll let that dry so you can see what that creates. That creates what they call a blossom. And there are artists who absolutely love working with blossoms. I'm just not that artist. I don't like blossoms very much. I'm trying not to have a white area in, in the in between all of the uh, petals that are meeting. So let's just fill that in. Again, I'm gonna dry my brush really well and just soften that. Okay, where are we at here? Okay, I think, no, we can't do that because we just did this one here. Let's soften that and get that 
Okay. Okay, so where's the next one we can do that's far enough from one that's been wet? Um, I, I'm, you know, I think that that value, maybe a little bit more down. So I've already done one layer on this and it's completely dry now. So I can come back and do another layer on it. But I'm going to be very careful with this layer because this petal actually is fairly light compared to the one behind it and even the one that's underneath over here. So I don't want to darken it down too much, but it needs a little bit more value. Get my hand down again. And it needs some pure colors. I'm start I'm seeing pure colors in here too. So I'll just put a little bit of pure colors in there. Okay. And a little bit more of that Quin magenta, but mostly Quin magenta with a little bit of the the neutral tint in it. Okay, I'm going to bring that down. Now this area, this point here, is got a little float of just the neutral tint. So I'm going to take some off on my, on my damp cloth and pull a little bit in. And I want to be super careful and I'm watching the shape that it's for creating and putting the paint in place and then let it dry, let it be. I see that there's a hint of light right here, so I'm gonna just come in with my dry brush and pull a little bit of the paint away. It's still damp, it's not gonna to totally go, it won't ever go down to white. There are paints that do uh, come completely away, I'm not the one who uses those. I, I I don't tend to use those because I work in layers. It makes it more difficult to manage. Well, I think this is probably a good place to stop. Um, in my next newsletter, I will put um, images of some of the challenges that you can have with watercolor. Um, so if you want to sign up, let's get over here and because I've got the camera so I can work with it. Oops. Okay, this way that I want to go. Hey, there we are. Thank you for coming today. In my next newsletter, and if you're not signed up for the weekly newsletter, um, just go to dancingravenstudio.ca and you can sign up for the weekly newsletter and it comes out on Tuesdays. I will show you some of the problems you can have with watercolor and um, them. And in fact, I will, the next, next uh, live stream, I will show you how to. I'll show you images in the newsletter and I will physically show you how to fix those problems. Most watercolor problems are fixable. The key is letting it dry long enough so that everything is bone dry before you add more water on. Thank you for joining me this week and I will see you next week. I hope I'm done the peony and I'm moved on to the next flower but we'll wait and see. I mean I paint as fast as I can and it only goes as fast as it's gonna go. Anyway have a great week. It was lovely to see you.